Dear students, under the topic partial differential equations, so far we have been learning about linear partial differential equation. Now further, we will be learning about non-linear partial differential equation. We have the standard types of the first order equations. We will be learning four types of partial differential equations and the first type is f of p comma q is equal to zero which means x, y and z will not be present in the equation explicitly and only p and q will be present in the equation. After that we will be solving type 2, type 3 and type 4 which I will be explaining you while solving them. Now before we go to type 1 we shall see the types of solution that we have to find for a partial differential equation. First we have to find the complete solution and after finding the complete solution we have to find the singular integral and the general solution. This complete solution is also known as complete integral and the problem is said to be complete only if you find the remaining two solutions. So what is a complete solution? So if in the solution if you have the number of arbitrary constants to be equal to the number of independent variables then it is said to be complete solution which you will understand better while solving a problem. And what is a particular integral? If in the complete solution, if we give particular values for the arbitrary constants, then it will be known as a complete solution, which, which will be found only if it is asked in the question. Whereas, the singular integral and general solution is to be found compulsorily along with the complete solution in order to find the complete solutions of the problem. Now, in this uh, lecture, we will be learning about type 1 which is f of p comma q. First we will see the method of solving the equation f of p comma q is equal to 0. Now here we have the method of solving type 1 equation. So the type 1 equation f of p comma q is equal to 0 has to be first marked as equation 1. In this equation only p and q will be present. For this equation, the first step is we have to assume that its solution is of the form z equal to ax plus by plus c and we have to mark it as equation 2. Now obviously, if, we, if you differentiate z with respect to x and y partially, you will find that you will be getting a when, when differentiated partially with respect to x and you will be getting b when differentiated partially with respect to y. Now we know that dou x, dou z by dou x is p and dou z by dou y is q. So p is equal to a and q is equal to b gives us the, th as the third equation. So after finding first, second and third equation, we have to take and substitute the third equation in equation 1. And these two steps will be the same for all the problems that we will be solving. Now after substituting this third equation in equation 1, we will have equation in terms of a and b which in which we have to solve for the value of b. Now after finding the value of b, we have to take the value of b and substitute in equation 2 which will give us the complete solution. You will understand this better when we solve the problem. And for sure there will be no singular integral for this type of equation. So I will tell you the reason for it when solving the problem and we have to find the singular integral for remaining types of the problem. But for this type, there is no singular integral. And the solution will also be absurd if you try to find the singular integral. So the next one is general integral. Now in order to find the general integral, we have similar, a small procedure which I will explain while doing the problem. So now we will solve a problem in order to understand the method of solving the, uh, the first type of partial differential equation f of p comma q is equal to 0. So now here we have problem 1 from type 1. We are going to solve p square plus q square is equal to 4. We observe that only p and q are present in this equation. So first we have to write that this equation is of the form f of p comma q is equal to 0. So we have written that this equation is of the form f of p comma q is equal to 0. Now we have to take the given equation as equation 1. 
so this is from the steps that is involved in solving this kind of equation so first mark the given equation as equation 1 so after this what is the second step if you see the second step is we have to assume z equal to ax plus by plus c as the solution of this equation 1 so let us write that and we shall mark it as equation 2 and the next step is we have to differentiate z with respect to x and y so let us do that now if you see here if we differentiate the z partially with respect to x we get it as so these two uh, this by and c will be constants which will become 0 and the differentiation of ax will be a in a similar manner partially differentiating with respect to y ax plus and c will become 0 and when by is differentiated differentiation of y is 1 and so it will be equal to b but what is dou z by dou x it is p and dou z by dou y is q so therefore p is equal to a and q is equal to b and this has to be taken and written and marked as equation 3 now what is the next step after that after getting equation 3 the next step is we have to substitute equation 3 in e in equation 1 and we have to solve for b so let us take this and substitute in equation 1 so in equation 1 at the place of p we have to equate write it as q and at the place of i mean a and at the place of q we have to write it as b so let us do that so equation 1 will be so when we substitute p as a i mean uh, yeah p as a we get a square plus q as b so b square is equal to 4 and from this what we get is b square is equal to 4 minus a square from which we obtain the value of b to be equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus a square so this is the value of b that we have obtained and let us mark this as equation 4 what is the next step after solving for b we have to substitute the value of b in equation 2 and that will give us the complete integral complete solution is also known as complete integral so we have to substitute the value of b in equation 2 so since we have marked b as 4 so we have to substitute equation 4 in equation 2 so equation 2 is the solution that we have written so what we will get if we substitute so z will be equal to ax will remain as it is now instead of b we have to write plus or minus square root of 4 minus a square so at this place we have to write plus or minus square root of 4 minus a square and then we have y plus c so this gives us the complete solution let us mark this as equation 5 so equation 5 gives us the complete solution you can say complete solution or you can also say complete integral so therefore z equal to ax plus or minus square root of 4 minus a square y plus c gives us the complete solution so the problem is not completed from here we have to find the singular solution and the general solution but for f of p comma q we saw that there will be no singular solution so from the method of solving we noticed that there is no singular solution that is singular integral for this type f of p comma q is equal to 0 singular solution is also known as singular integral you can use any of the terms so f of p comma q is equal to 0 for this form we do not have the singular integral but it is necessary to mention in the problem so let us write that so we have written that there is no singular integral next we have to find the general solution so now in order to find the general solution we have to put c is equal to a function of a in the complete solution so what is the complete solution equation 5 gives us the complete solution so in this equation 5 we have to put c is equal to f of a so in this equation 5 i have replaced c as f of a because we have taken c is equal to f of a and the new equation that we have obtained i have marked it as equation 6 the next step is we have to differentiate equation 6 with respect to a 
So differentiating equation 6 partially with respect to a, we get dou z by dou a. But we need not show the uh, differentiation if it is little tedious because a is here in the square root and um, this differentiation will become uh, when with, with, with respect to a when we do it becomes uh, x is a constant so you will have x alone so x plus or minus differentiation of this term multiplied with y plus f dash of a is what you get but here you need not show you and you can just say that dou z by dou a we have to obtain and after obtaining dou z by dou a it has to be equated to 0 and this equation has to be marked as equation 7. Anyway, this after differentiation, this equation will be in terms of A. Now, from equation 6 and equation 7, we have to eliminate A in order to find the general integral. If we are able to show that, we can very well do that. If not, we can simply write it as eliminating A between equation 6 and equation 7, we obtain the general integral. With this, the problem is completed. So, this is the method for solving equations of the form f of p, q is equal to 0. So, the problem is complete only if you find the complete solution and the general solution as well. So, now here, uh, because we had uh, a in the square root, we simply uh, showed the method of solve finding the general solution by eliminating a between equation 6 and 7. If we are able to do it easily, then very well we can show it after simplifying it also. You will definitely understand this concept more better when you solve more problems on this topic which will be our following lectures. So kindly follow the upcoming lectures on this topic. Thank you.